pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hello, everybody. Nice to see everybody again. Uh, we are here for our budget workshop. We've been plunking along, getting some good presentations. So I'm going to move through the agenda. Is there anyone here for public participation concerning the budget? Hearing and seeing none, we're going to move forward with our budget workshop. Tonight we're going to hear from IT, facilities, and then we'll talk about some capital items. Uh, Joe, as uh, Paul and Dan come up, you just want to talk about the capital stuff too, or you want to do that last? I'll do that at the end because most okay. of it is under most of it's under facilities now that a big portion of uh, capital has been moved out of a big portion With of IT has been moved okay. out of capital and into the operating budget. Okay, so we are ready for IT. Paul, he's using this. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. So for the proposed 2023-2024 budget year, uh, the ask is for $221,000. Um, some of the drivers for this, as you probably are aware, there was a shift of $125,000 from capital to operating. We're also experiencing increasing student enrollment. Um, we're also dealing with economic inflation. Uh, part of the increase is to also increase uh, network bandwidth at both MASIC and the uh, technology hub site. Um, we're finding that uh, even during normal days, uh, the bandwidth is maxing out at the high school. And that's going to become a problem come testing time. So. Um, there was a minor increase overall for our internet access and of course um, the ongoing ever-increasing cyber threats that we have to deal with day in and day out Paul, well, um, I don't know if any everyone is aware of that on the board is aware of that um, the capital to operating yep. switch um, so if you could go into that just a little, a little sure um, which I'm gonna go through this slide just to show you some of the increases, and then I'll show you what was actually transferred over. Um, and part of that information is here. So the, the noteworthy budget lines that have increased are, not surprisingly, software renewals. Uh, not only does software continue to become more expensive year over year, a lot of the software is based on our student population. So as we get more students, we have to buy more licenses for certain things. Um, for technical services, one of the line, one of the items that lives under that line is our student information systems uh, power school. That is also per student. <coughs> That's what we get charged. We pay a fee per student. Um, so again, as that increases, uh, uh, population increases, so does that cost. Um, our internet access, which I just spoke about, that's a 27% increase, or 16,500. That's going to allow um, more than double the bandwidth for the high school and our hub site to um, support that extra capacity. <clears throat> One of the things to piggyback off of that is that we are coming to the end of a five-year contract with Charter which does our wide area network. So we're negotiating with them to not only for the high school and the hub site, but also on the town side as well to update some of their uh, sites for increased bandwidth. And part of the $125,000 is reflected here. Uh, new instructional equipment. Last year, that line was a zero line. Um, and with the move of some of the capital, the IT capital stuff to operating, uh, that went to that line. And I'm gonna break down what, what exactly that means in the next slide. Um, and then non-instructional technology, which was 20,000. Again, on the next slide, I'll explain exactly what those items were. So 
So we received a $200,000 grant, which I'll speak to um, again on the next slide, but that kind of negated this year and next year's ask for teacher laptop replacements, display upgrades, and projector replacements. So that took care of this year, and I'm not asking for it next year because I'm replacing all of those items with the grant. Um, as part of the five-year plan, um, I had budgeted $75,000 for Chromebook replacements and $30,000 for rolling desktop replacements, which includes uh, certain labs uh, that, that need to be updated. Um, so both of those have been moved to the instructional equipment line. And then finally, security updates and virtual server hardware, that 20000 has been moved to the non-instructional equipment. So um, backing out what we would have asked for next year for laptop replacements and display upgrades and projector replacements um, and leaving the rest, that was $125,000. Some of our accomplishments, uh, we did receive a $200,000 uh, grant from the U.S. Department of Education um, for the Jockey Hollow STEM campuses. It was a STEM-based grant, uh, grant, so um, we were able to replace all of the staff laptops. Well, we, we have them. We're in the process of replacing them now. Um, so <coughs> laptops and then these very very neat and very useful interactive displays this was something we had been piloting uh, throughout the district at, at various uh, what I would call high-tech users um, what this does is it essentially replaces the smart board uh, it's on a cart uh, it's a 65 inch display it's all touch screen it's wireless so now instead of having a screen at the front of the room, everybody has to go up to the front of the room, you can actually drag this thing around the classroom. Um, we piloted a, um, a unit a couple months ago here, up here at Massac with STEM, um, Bill McDonough. Uh, they loved it, so we moved forward with that. And that was, uh, we'll be rolling those out over the next few weeks. I'm gonna try those, Paul, please. Um, I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> um, yeah, they, um, let me get back to you on that, because there, there were two components. It's the actual display itself and then the, the cart, uh, which were separate. Um, but I can get you that information. You have special cleaning for the touch screen? <coughs> no. Nope. No, just a damp cloth. Um, during uh, our demo, um, one of the... Uh, one of the people that were demoing the product they said look you know i said you know this is a it's a 65 inch tv i mean how how durable is this thing going to be it is commercial grade and he actually took the side of his fist and he slammed he <laughs> literally slammed the display everybody in the room you know and it just kept on working so it is definitely it is built for the classroom so we come um, full circle. It sounds like the chalkboard in the, in the chalk. You can hit it. You, you yeah, a wet throw cloth, erasers it. at it. Yeah, yeah. so come yeah. Full circle. <clears throat> Longer lifespan on those than uh, the smart ones. So. Uh, you know, I have to say, you know, this. So there's two components to the smart board. There's the actual board itself, which you know as long as people aren't stabbing them which we have seen uh, they do last a pretty pretty long time it's the projector that actually puts the image on the screen those you know they, they have varying uh, life cycles depending on you know how often they're used you know if they're left on for a week at a clip you know the bulbs go on them although I will say the bulbs have gotten much less expensive I mean you know we used to we used to spend hundreds of dollars for a single bulb and now they're they've come down quite a bit so uh, but it, it's the technology is old and you know we need to move on um, one of the other things that we were able to secure that I'm also again pursuing um, is a, a grant through Peg Pictia 
I believe that's how you say it. Uh, that is a grant. It's a state grant from the uh, from Pura, the, the fine folks at Pura, the Public Utilities Regulation Authority. Uh, apparently, they collect a, a fee on on all the utilities that everybody pays into, and they have two different grants. One is for uh, public education, uh, like television, and the other one is for um, technology for the public schools so we were able to secure 24,000 uh, for networking upgrades uh, here at Massac uh, those are network switches uh, those are the devices that pretty much connect everything together if you don't have a network switch then we're, we're stringing cans and you know <laughs> um, the other major thing that we were able to accomplish this year was we deployed what's called that alphabet soup up there that CIS version 8 implementation group 1 controls on our network that's a mouthful but what that is is that is an industry standard that basically protects our network in layman's terms it's a set of policies a lot of it is on the back end um, we've had a lot of complaints from people that you know one of the settings is is that if you leave your computer unattended it will automatically lock in 15 minutes um well, we, we've got a lot of people that are happy about that you know i, I gotta log in every time uh, that's by design so um but in implementing these controls uh, according to cis which is the center for internet security um, we will protect ourselves against 83% of the known um, attack methods that are widely, um, they call it a MITRE attack. It's uh, kind of an acronym there, but uh, MITRE is a, a National Institute of Technology um, company that comes up with these standards for security. So. It, it, it's a bit of a minor inconvenience for our users, but it, it absolutely keeps our network secure. Um, because I really don't ever want to come to the day where we have a breach, because then it's a whole different conversation. Uh, in that regard, uh, one of the things that's going to impact everybody is the implementation of multi-factor or two-factor authentication of externally facing servers. Um, the good news is it's only going to affect webmail. Um, we don't have we don't really have any servers in house that are externally facing. For example, our, our uh, power school, our SIS, is hosted. That is, it's off site. It's with our vendor. Um, so really, the only thing that we really need to protect are really our biggest vulnerability is our email. Uh, so in within the next month there'll be notices about that this will affect all of you too for checking email board email so there'll be there'll be instructions and hopefully it'll be a painless process so um, and one of the things too is that you know I've made a priority this past year of really um, prioritizing our cybersecurity posture I've gone to all of the schools um, during the month of October, we've had uh, cybersecurity awareness. <laughs> I sent emails out every single day for the month of October with uh, cybersecurity tips and little memes at the end. Um, you know, and the feedback was, "Dear Lord, is it November yet? <laughs> you know, <laughs> stop sending me this stuff." To you know, I really enjoyed some of them, and you know, hopefully people got stuff out of it. But you know, user awareness is the number one way to prevent a cyber attack. Um, you know, if you if you approved a million dollars for me and said, "Paul, here's a million dollars. Get all the staff and technology you want. Just let's not get ransomware." Um, I can't. I still can't guarantee it. I can't guarantee it with ten million dollars. I mean, the only way I could guarantee it is if I pulled the plug on everything, <laughs> right? We had no okay. more email, no more email. If we took away email, I could probably make it. and a million dollars. I could probably make a guarantee. Um, Don't worry about it. We're not giving you a millionaire. Right, right. So, so, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it really comes down to user awareness and user training. 
and so I really try and pound the pavement with that. Um, so, do we have fax servers anymore? I'm sorry. Fax servers. Well, we do have one fax server, which it, you know. Do you do you have a do you have a bug in our office? No. <laughs> um, it's funny. We actually just did an audit. This thing is beyond its useful life cycle, <laughs> um, and it is still up and running. And it's been red flagged for uh, for a while now. It's not being used. It still is up and running. Um, we have migrated our users to an online service called SFAX. Um, and the nice thing about SFAX is is that it's HIPAA compliant, um, and they publish a number. Um, and it's usually, um, it's usually, I believe it's a toll-free number, although don't quote me on that. But it's a, you know, they, they get a phone number assigned to them, and then instead of getting a fax directly to them, they get an email. Mm -hmm. They have to click on the email, then they have to sign into the portal. But from there, they can also send faxes, so it works out well. But yeah, that... So you're going to kill it? We, yeah, with, yeah. It's a good expense. Yeah. Um, it, it is. I mean... The problem is, is that in order to upgrade that device, it, it's it's just not cost effective. So, and honestly, faxing is is very niche now. There there there's not yeah, the a lot of people. Yeah, right right exactly. Yeah, I mean everybody emails now. So, great. Uh, let me see. I think that cool. is, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I had. If anybody had any, any questions. questions? Any, uh, are you talking about the high school being, you know, needing to increase bandwidth? Any issues at the other schools? No. Um, you know, so part of this, the whole cybersecurity posture, we, we monitor a lot of pretty much everything. And one of the things that we do is we have reports that tell us uh, we can actually take snapshots and see what our bandwidth utilization is. Um, the elementary schools, even the middle school, not not horrible at all. They have a one gigabyte bandwidth pipe, um, and there's capacity there. The high school, however, absolutely not. We're we're pretty much we're hitting that cap almost daily. And a lot of it I, I attribute to is that, you know, a lot of people have mobile devices. Um, so, f you know, for every person, you could have at least two at least two devices. You figure if somebody brings a laptop or is using a Chromebook and they have a personal cell phone. Um, so. How many gig do we have at high school? Or is it a terabyte? <clears throat> for bandwidth right now, we, we have what the other schools have, which is one gig. One gig? Yeah. So. Yeah, so we're looking to increase that. And there's no thought of changing carriers? Or is that a town thing? Um, I can tell the problem is, is that there aren't many carriers, right? I mean, and this, just so everybody's aware, too, because I know when, when Jerry Stevens had asked me, you know, this is not Internet access. This is literally tying all of the locations together. To a single to a single hub which is my building and then from there it goes out to the internet so internet access we're good we have internet access through uh, SEN the Connecticut Education Network on the board side um, and then on the town side they have their own dedicated charter circuit um, in order to look at a different carrier it would mean replacing fiber everywhere um, so you have t1s to all of them with t <laughs> no it's actually it's actually managed fiber oh, okay. uh, that all comes back to to my hub um and you know i've i've looked at I've looked at other vendors and unfortunately uh it would need to be a brand new system built out okay. This is already there, um, and I, you know, in my <coughs> discussions with with Charter, said, look, you know, you've made your money now, you know, on the investment. So, th the pricing has been very, very aggressive, extremely aggressive. So, 
Anything else for Paul? I yeah, have a quick question. Are, with the transition to CT SEDS this year, are you guys able to get rid of Frontline, or will you have to maintain that for like another year with how awful it's going? John might have the answer to that. And maybe the savings is so minimal. So we kept it this year. Frontline, we're going to get rid of it for next year. Oh, good. Yeah. But Frontline is more than just you right, IP front. direct. Yeah. Right. It's also part of our HR. Oh, okay. So yeah. you can only get rid of the one piece. Yeah, it would only be that one piece of the. Um, Chrissy, what's frontline? Sorry. Oh, it's the um, system that we were using previously in the state. It was it used to be IEP Direct. They were bought out by Frontline. So when the state came out with CT SEDS, it's supposed to be a free platform for all the IEPs, 504 plans, SRBI supposedly, and it did not go well. So districts had to hang on to that, um, that old, you know process for at least that. a year but it's not going well so I wasn't sure if you'd have to hang on to it for another year I didn't realize they incorporated more into it yeah frontline also does our absence management our substitutes our um, time management um, yeah web clock applicant tracking applicant yeah. yeah it's supposed to be a cost savings for districts and it's because it was for those, free all those, like the actual reports platform. yes yeah the actual IEP reports instead of being yeah yeah, but we would, have, at this point, a majority of our kids have transitioned over, so whatever is an IEP or 504 direct is yeah, yeah, outdated sure. at this right. point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But to Chrissy's point, there was all kinds of problems. I mean, putting it mildly, when they when they went over to it, I know in the middle of like meetings, they would change languages. Yeah. On oh, yeah. Folks. Or everything would disappear. Oh, they're 28 ones. So. Everything yeah. would disappear and not come disappear. back. Disappear. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that happens a lot. Stuff, mm -hmm. information just disappears yeah. from it. So that's why people yeah, were running both on platforms. Land, yeah, redundancy. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. So you had to pay for it. Yeah, redundancy. Yeah. You go back to <laughs> on, on the on the local area network. Um, yeah. it depends on what kind of redundancy you're talking about. Um, I mean, you if, have dual pipes to each place, right? No, no, okay. no. I mean, if 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 a pole goes down, we're done. Um, depending on where it is. Um, yeah, we so we only do have, but it is managed fiber though too. So um, there are times we know about an outage before, well, or the, our vendor knows about the outage before we do. Um, so no, we don't have redundancy as far as the lines back to our hub site. Um, we do have redundancy as far as other systems go. Um, if we were to lose uh, a, a virtual server at a location, we have another one that would, you would okay. pick up the slack. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. We good? Anything else for Paul? Okay. Thank you, Thanks, Paul. Thank, Thank you. you. Paul. Keep letting us sleep. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for Dan, who's going to walk us through facilities and. <coughs> Good evening, everybody. Hi, Dan. How you doing? Um, let me give a quick thanks to uh, Jeff and Dave for overseeing this uh, proposal. Uh, we'll jump right in. Uh, Why not? There we go. <laughs> Pass the pictures to the meet. Okay. Uh, so this year's request. We are looking for $8,743 increase. This is a 0.7%. Um, so over the last couple of years, uh, with your support, we've increased the budget quite a bit. There was a big push to do some catch up, mm -hmm. and now we're seeing the results of that. So this is a more, uh, more levelized budget now. Um, there's just a few lines that we could still use a little bit of a tweak. Um, so we'll go over those right now. The top two, let's skip, and we'll go back to those, and we'll start with the third. So the third line is the heating repair line. Um, you know, anything to do with the contractors and that heating systems we have are older. They're just, you know, the contractors are getting you know, more and more expensive to use. Everybody's seeing the, you know, inflation costs, rising gas, parts. So every time we have a contractor out in some of our bigger repair lines, so we're seeing that hit. So in that particular line, looking for a 42.53 or 3.5% increase. Um, 
the building repair line is basically the same, right? Uh, that's a lot of that is outside contractors as well. So for the same reasons, we're looking for an increase, and that one's eight and a half percent, ten thousand two hundred. Uh, the next two lines are basically supply. So copy paper uh, has gone through the roof. We saw that last year. It continues to rise. There's no current uh, uh, state bid on that anymore. Nobody will pick it up. So the, the cost of the copy paper keeps rising, and we're just looking for a little increase to keep up with that, uh, 3,509.6%. Uh, the bottom line, same thing, custodial supplies, same paper issue, uh, toilet paper, paper towels, everything comes from there. Uh, the new state mandated next year we need to have feminine uh, hygiene products in all the uh, bathrooms uh, free of charge throughout the schools. So the increased cost to supply that and that reflects uh, about a 12% increase, uh, $11,000. So if we go back to those top two lines, in our budget, there's five uh, budget lines to make up custodial maintenance overtime. So uh, when an employee clocks in, you can choose from, is it a school activity? Is it you're subbing for a shortage that night? Are you uh, snow removal? Um, we've been tracking to make sure that sometimes there's some mistakes made when they clock in it's difficult sometimes they're not sure if it's a reimbursable uh, school function or a regular school function they don't really know so tracking that um for the last couple of years uh and, and i have to give uh margaret wasnick a shout out uh, she's amazing and uh, she gives me a hand we both double check each other uh every payroll go through everybody's overtime make sure it's in the correct account line so then we could track it and get the right history so after doing that um that if you look at the top line that's the sub line that one was falling short so uh we boosted that one to 40 but the second line was over budgeted by quite a bit so we dropped that down to 50,000 a net gain of 41 it offsets the 20 <laughs> increase above so overall it's a twenty thousand dollar savings there so if you look at the budget it's at 0.7 you know had that overtime adjustment not been made it would have been about uh 2.2 percent about a thirty thousand dollar increase so Dave, that can, is it Dave, can you explain a little bit it looks like um like we have substitute custodians that are get, that get called up, but that's really that's what the account. Yeah, is those. Are, yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. So anytime a custodian calls in sick, on vacation, whatever type yeah. of day, yeah, death and family, whatever it may be, you know, um, those are the other guys stepping up and uh, doing some overtime to make sure that area is ready for the next school day. And that is it. One question. <laughs> sure. Sorry. Yeah. Not that electricity is our friend, but you know, have you gone to uh, other electric um, dryers for the bathrooms yet? Any place? No. You know, uh, we're looking into it, but the problem is there's a, a lot of the buildings don't have enough electrical supply to run those circuits. They actually do draw quite a bit. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm not sure once you buy the right? units, pay the electrical cost, run the circuits. You know. How long it would take to get that back and you know it, i think it would be a little bit too long thanks any other questions yeah the top two lines you factored in i mean i know you lost the custodian this year is that covering get on right? <coughs> you lost the custodian i guess the summer maybe yeah you mean Gita, right? Well, he retired, oh, but we replaced. Okay, so that, that covered, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Anything else for Dan? We'll move to capital. I, I would just add that uh, I think Dan did an excellent job keeping it very flat, um, especially since going back two or three years, his budget was the one that got gutted first when we did make cuts. So I know we did some catch-up work, but uh, I thought, you know. Then, especially? Yeah. Yeah, thanks to Sheila for letting us use your office again. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, we'll jump right into capital. <clears throat> okay. First thing is the uh, facilities and demographic study. I'm not sure if you've all heard that that's in play and coming up. So with that in mind, um, I'm sure it's going to dig deeper than, you know, uh, we can currently see, which might change uh, how we prioritize this list. So there may be some things on here that, you know, due to some new information, might get adjusted. You know, hey, this roof's worse than this one. Even though that one's costing you more in repairs, believe it or not, it's that one you need to do. You know, who knows? So when that study comes back, uh, nothing's, say, set in stone on this list. Um, and so. a lot of this work for 23, 24 would probably get done not necessarily this summer. The it's next the summer. following so we'll, summer. We'll That's have the luxury of having the facility study back in time. Right, right, Joe. Know. So <clears throat> reprioritize this list as well. When you look at the capital um, ask, right? So even though it's this fiscal year, by the time it gets funded, actually happens, it's probably the following summer. So even though it's funded this year most likely happens the following year because you can't do it during a school year. Some projects you can if it's outside and you're not interrupting classes or it's a purchase. But nine times out of ten, a capital project is so large, it's too disruptive to the school year. So even though it's funded that year, the project's not done to the following summer. So, all right, starting with uh, Fawn Hollow, uh, we have the paving of the front uh, circle there adding some drainage and uh, and it's I shouldn't say just the front circle it's the front it's the whole school so that would be repaving the whole school but especially the front circle is where we need the drainage added so there's no drainage currently there <laughs> Joe's spoken about it a number of it's times like crumbling from the no well the, the side the side lot is a mess and if you think about yeah. it, we gotta do something you have to do it there. if you went over there today you like go oh, this front doesn't look bad right but it was put when it was put in it was not pitched so any water yeah. this time of year it's a pool we get yeah, it's a pool rain yeah. or melt or snow and then ice just pulls right up and yeah major uh, uh stuff and barn hazards yeah you get snow melt down throughout the you know <coughs> winter season it might not have snowed for two weeks but we're constantly salting that front turnaround just to yeah. keep up with it um, and then exterior doors at Fawn Hollow as well. There's a number of exterior <coughs> doors that need to be upgraded, you know, just old, aged out, rotten. Um, and at Monroe Elementary, we're looking to do the same paving there throughout the building and install possibly some uh, parking lot lighting. So it's the only school in the district that the parking lot is not lit. So, uh, it's very dark there I'm sure for night functions and and what have you so obviously that would be the best time to install that not after we pave <laughs> we're getting you know um, looking to do that as well and the cafeteria floor at Monroe Elementary needs to be replaced so uh, that's the two hundred thousand dollars there uh, Stepney Elementary <coughs> stay uh, with that sorry yeah you roof you moved out 25 26 I brought it up before, and it's probably moot because you probably looked in. All the roofs have been pretty much replaced, like that one, I think. Right? A possibility of putting solar up there at all? <coughs> We're still looking into that. I'm, uh, I'm sure when we get to the roof, oh, at, sorry, yeah, sorry. yeah, we can definitely look into that. I'm sure maybe the demographic study might have some information on that as well. Yeah, is, the, is the basketball court at Fawn Hollow getting work done? The floor? Um, it is not. So, no, the basketball court was done, the gym floor was done at you know, Stepney Elementary. Um, it's currently not on there. Um, let me just check, because we did, Fawn Hollow's gym floor was the same age as Stepney's. Um, Stepney's, for some reason, deteriorated much faster. Fawn Hollow's is still actually in reasonably good shape. Yeah. It hasn't made the capital uh, uh, five-year budget yet. Maybe it's six year out or seven, you know, we'll make that adjustment, but it's in currently in, in decent shape, so it's not on the list yet. We originally did have it on there thinking that, you know, 
maybe get a kind of a two for one little bit of a savings yeah. a lot of these companies come from out of state so if you're doing the demo on one maybe we get them both done the costs were just too expensive to do both at the same time so the uh, second one was a mess and that we found out as we went in that there was that yeah big abatement of uh, mercury yeah mercury abatement yeah that turned into a costly project so we couldn't add fun hollow to the to the show at that time um, okay Stephanie Elementary we have installed new drop ceilings uh, in about 25 of the classrooms so the the current ceilings in that school are like a tectum material they're flaking they're falling apart uh, it, it really needs an upgrade so um, new drop ceilings new lighting and make sure our fire systems are relocated to the new ceiling to you know protect the area but it'd be a great upgrade uh, a, a much cleaner brighter learning environment for the students for sure it's it's definitely old and dark um, and then we have the tile floor in the kitchen at 70 as well for 40,000 jockey hollow doorknobs and crash bars so what we're trying to do, that one's kind of like, it's on there. Um, we're moving forward with taking some uh, doorknobs and crash bars out of Chalk Hill and using them at Jockey Hollow. So depending on how many we can retrofit and use, and, and it, it might be enough to take that right off of the capital budget. But we just started that project now. So we'll see. I left it on there, but uh, it might come off. And at Massac, uh, we have a small section of septic pipe that still needs to be replaced. So uh, we've had quite a bit of piping work done over the years at Massac. There's about um, two to three hundred foot section that still needs to be done. So rather than wait for uh, an issue, we're looking to just uh, take care of that. Um, that's a piece from the building basically out through the soft from the septic tank to the back of the softball field yeah that last we've done that from field, that point beyond all the down way up to the baseball field yeah the set, that field basically. yeah exactly i so wish we could have sewers yeah would be nice, it would be really nice. that's for sure and then we have the uh <laughs> stadium press box on there so I know Steve's currently doing a fundraiser, uh, looking into um, uh, seeing if he can make a go with that and uh, replace the press box. Even if he does the fundraiser, that 75000 still needs to be in there for, it's going to need, with the, with the new design, it's going to need new electrical runs to support that and a, a foundation. So we're looking at the time. Now, if you're familiar with where the press box currently is, it's in the outfield of the baseball field. We would like to possibly look into lifting that up, relocating it over the fence onto the stadium hill of the you know uh, football field. Get it off the baseball field. It's a little bit of a safety issue, I'm sure, when those guys are playing, and uh, be a much cleaner, better look down the road you might see uh, new bleachers go on the capital project uh, plan for the stadium field as well so if we relocate that press box where it should be bring the aluminum bleachers up to it that's how it should be done the right way to do it it's how every ball field is so and Dan that's holding up everything else that we we'd like to do the movement right. of the press with, box? With, with the yeah in other words we've got to do that first it's almost like the first move to yeah. everything else that Steve has talked to us about, right? So exactly. That done. Exactly. So the press box would be at an end zone look? No, or it's midfield. Midfield on the but not on the field. Just further down the hill, yeah. Just further down the hill, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh yeah, no, that's it. As we look a little further out, Dan, what, what rate of inflation are we using for some of those bigger projects, let's say in like 25, 26, even like 24, 25, we got 1.5 million for roof replacement. Are we factoring in inflation to that and the anticipated cost? We look at this capital budget every year, 
so every year when you get a you know a piece of what inflation is going to be we try to adjust those numbers yeah it's very difficult not only to look at inflation but material costs on projects that large labor rates it can fluctuate so much yeah so when the project actually comes to uh fruition and, and you're really going to look into doing it that would be the time to put the, the dollar amount on it uh, yeah, we've seen the, yeah, to see. yeah. E even on smaller projects you know <clears throat> we, i get a quote from somebody quotes good for two weeks mm -hmm. you know yeah. they don't yeah. want they don't want to hold out so uh material well, cost really just essentially factoring in and, and inflating the number just assuming that it's going to be let's say more than what you were anticipating so right right <clears throat> yeah look how building supplies jumped in the last that's what i mean right yeah. so yeah, it's, it's difficult. Almost lean more toward the aggressive side because it's easier to pull it back. Yeah, lean it. Dennis. Yeah, I know you're stealing crash bars and doors. But why <laughs> door are you stealing doing knobs? Why don't you steal the doors? And I'll take it off 25, 26. <laughs> what do you mean? You have are those exterior doors? doors? For door replacement, just take them from Chalk Hill now. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, what are you looking at? 25, 26 what? On OL, 75,000 door replacements. Those are my exterior doors. Exterior doors. Those, yeah. those doors, yeah. those exterior doors. Exterior doors. doors. Like and I'm sure they're just in the same shape at <laughs> He's trying at least. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's all right. A for effort. <laughs> um, so, Dan, um, and we've talked about this because of the facility study. Mm -hmm. um, We'll, we'll take a look at that when those, when that comes through, and then we'll be able to reprioritize, re re easy for me to say, yeah. um, and then maybe pull uh, pull back on some of these or, or just put them off a little bit. Exactly. Right? Okay. So, you know, that's going to give us a lot of information, and I'm sure we'll be able to rework this. And, uh, you know, like I said, because these projects, these larger ones especially, won't be ready to do to the following summer we'll have that information way ahead of time Correct. to know if we need to push that out pull one up and, and make those adjustments then yeah yeah and and i want to thank you and your staff too um you mentioned about the uh the the items you've been i know you've been scavenging a lot from from chalk hill and that saves uh, uh, us a lot of money so we appreciate yeah, all that sure, work man. you're welcome yeah because we may be able to pull some of that out you said too of the 75,000 for yeah for the yeah. right exactly okay so you know there's all new all new doorknobs there were installed at the same time right so they're just right. sitting there okay. yeah so. okay um and Ron if I can just jump and pull uh kick in too on we were talking about the $200,000 grant plus the the $24,000 grant um Ron how is that affecting or is it is that only affecting capital where we're pulling we can pull that back from because you said this year and next year or is that affecting operating as well and will that drop down the 5.77 number um as it's, it's well already or no that's already reflected already yeah okay yeah okay so we've applied that yeah okay okay that's good okay any other questions at all about <coughs> Mm -hmm. IT, capital, facilities? Well, since we were talking about the facilities, have you had any update as to the timing of that study? It's funny, I just got an email today, this uh, afternoon. I don't know, Dan or Ron, if you got it too or not. Just got, just got something today. Uh, I didn't even have a chance to look at it before I, before I came here, but I got something from the, uh, the group that we met with, so I'll take a look at it. I'll, I'll give you an update. Sure. Thanks. Do you have, um, Ron, does that have to go out to RFP? Because July 1, it'll be funded, so we can go out to RFP so maybe in June, or how does that w it, process it, work? I think the um, the threshold is 50000 so it depends on whether it actually comes in above or below that, and I think there was some question as to uh, might come in under. Yeah. Okay, so we... We don't know. How will we know that number? We're just getting some estimates, like pre-bids? Yeah. Okay. We could, uh, you know, we, we could get a couple quotes. And then we officially put it out if, well, if we need to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that would be funded, Jeff, July one, so we can move. You know. So, like Dan said, we're talking. You know, down the road. I'm sure it would take several months to do, and then it's a lot of deliberation and everything else. Um, and we're gonna, like we said, I think we want to focus them on uh, very specific things. You know, buildings, field use. Mm -hmm. 
so that they're not all over the place to Alan's point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else from the board? No? Okay, then I just want to remind everyone that our next meeting is going to be Tuesday, January 17th at 7. It's a regular board meeting, and uh, we could potentially vote on this budget then. We'll have an open discussion, and uh, I'll put it on the agenda as a, as a possible vote, and we'll, we'll go from there. Okay? If Mr. Stevens isn't Mr. here. Mr. Stevens is not here. I just stay. don't know what to do. We're, we're going to sit here. See you next Tuesday. Would anyone like to make a motion to adjourn? <laughs> Shannon, seconded by Christine. Any discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. Good night, everybody. Thanks.